guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at some wacky delays. I'll play the track and then we'll dive into it. Let's go. Okay, so there you have it. That's the track for today. Now we're going to be taking a look at the Pulsar Echo Rack. This is based off the Binson Echo Rack, very old school. I wouldn't say a tape delay, it's a magnetic disc delay. Let's get the plug-in up actually, I'll show you right now. Looks a little something like this. So you can see you got your magnetic disc on the top. So normally on a tape delay, you'd have the tape go around the path that would have a couple different playback heads set up around the tape. And because there are different distances, that in turn would add the delay sound because the tape has to travel that distance before it's picked up on the heads. In this case, it works slightly differently. You've got this magnetic disc that spins and similar concept where as it goes around, the sound would pass through each head and then in turn be playback at a different speed. So I just quickly wanted to mention, this isn't a sponsored video. Pulsar did send me this plugin to try out, but there was no money exchange. So what you're hearing is my true and honest opinion. And with that in mind, let's continue with the video. What's cool about this is basically a more or less mono delay. You can do a couple stereo things, but we'll get into that a bit later. So taking a look at this plugin, you can see we've got a couple different things going on here. Now, bear in mind, this is a mostly mono plugin you can do a couple of stereo things but you're not going to find ping pong and stuff like that on it it's very straightforward in that matter you can see at the top of the plugin we've got these couple of playback heads at the top here and this delay knob allows us to select any of the playback heads as well as a combination of a couple of them if not all of them you've got some pretty standard delay controls here such as your feedback disk speed would be basically the speed of the delay your wet dry mix as well as a couple of EQ settings, such as a tone control. You also have a condition, which kind of sounds like a bit of filtering, but maybe a bit of degradation going on in there, as well as some drive and a master volume. This delay comes with three modes. You've got echo, repeats, and swell. Basically, the difference is echo has just a single feedback, so da just goes like that, just one repeat. The repeats, obviously, you get the repeats like a normal delay. And then the swell basically feeds back throughout the rest of the playback heads, creating almost like a sense of a reverb, but just creating a lot of repetitions in the delay. So that's all of the controls. Now let's get some sound out of this. You heard the track I played in the beginning, so I'm just going to solo some of the tracks and show you what they sound like. So this is our main guitar line we've got going on. Really lovely character on the delay. Nothing crazy going on. I've got the condition on good, the tone right in the middle, so you're hearing the truest kind of form or color of this delay. I quickly want to show you what the different delays do when you change the tape heads. It's going to change the speed, and so this delay head control kind of plays hand in hand with the disc speed, because if I change the disc speed, you change the speed of the delay. But then, say I change the delays. That also changes the speed of the delay you're listening to. What I've gathered is if I was using this on host, which basically just assigns the delay speed to the tempo of the project I'm working in, which can keep it a bit more organized in the case that you want everything to be synced up with your project, I would keep the delay head on four because that basically links up if it's on four and you put one fourth, it's linked up with the actual speed of the project. I have to remember to keep the mode on repeats just so you hear it as a standard delay. Then obviously I can change the speed. Awesome. But now if I change the playback head and the delays, we can hear how the different playback heads will also change the speed. Mm -hmm. 
as well as using a combination of two or more. When we use all the playheads together, it's kind of getting a little bit closer to a reverb sound, but otherwise sounding really nice, really clean, a lot of character in there. So I'm going to put it back on four just so we can use this as our speed. Let's quickly listen to what the different conditions will sound like. I'm just going to put, for the sake of this, the mix onto 100%, so we're just hearing the delay sound, and we'll start on good and I'll try use the mint. <laughs> Try out the tone as well. You can hear the used mode is actually introducing a little bit of noise. If I put it onto good, it's less, and if I put it onto mint, you can barely hear it. There's a little slight bit of EQ going on there, but not too much. I think a lot of the main thing I'm hearing is just the addition of that extra noise in there. So stereo drift is quite an interesting feature. Again, this isn't a super stereo plugin. You're not going to be doing any ping pong delays or stuff like that. But what stereo drift allows is that it slightly changes the speed of one or the other side, depending on which one you pick. And so in turn, that makes it feel like the delay is slowly falling to one or the other side. <laughs> So like I said, you're not getting loads of stereo going on. There is a way we can create a ping pong with this. It requires a little bit of routing, but we'll dive into that a little bit later. I'm going to pull this mix back a bit so we can hear the dry signal again. And we're going to check out Swell. Before I do that, I'm just going to pull the repeats really low so we can just hear a very short repeat. <laughs> If I put it on to swell, you hear it's going to sound like there's a lot more repeats going on. You can hear that like there's a very slight slapback sound going on underneath. If I crank this feedback, you'll start to hear that it really kind of melds into one sound. little additional feature you can actually pull this to slow it down or speed it up just adds little pitch effects a fun little tool that's the difference between the swell and the repeats really cool now we can dive into the drive a bit what's very interesting about this delay is the fact that you can add a lot of character with just the drive i can even just turn off the playback heads so you're only getting the sound of the transformers in the box so that's with full drive you can add a real nice bit of saturation to it but even without it it does add a nice little bit of warmth to your sound so super interesting. Again, I'm just going to put this back on the original place where we had it set. Add a little bit of drive. Really nice. That's quite a lot of food feedback. I'm just going to pull that back. So what I would love to try is actually just play through it a bit and it might give me a slightly better example. <laughs> So obviously this being an analog style delay, we can do a lot of the fun pitch repeats, you know, this kind of You can get super creative, very wacky sounds out of this. Very cool. And then obviously with, com with the combination of using the different playback heads, we can get some very interesting rhythmic delay sounds. Sweet. 
Okay, I'm going to try it on some piano. Really lovely. Adding a super lush ambience to this. I would maybe even slap a little reverb after it just to give it a bit more space, you know. Awesome. Really digging the sound of that. Last but not least, I've heard a lot of people use the Benson on stuff like drums, percussion, that kind of stuff to give it a bit more of a vintage feel. And so I've picked up this uh, loop that I'm using in this song. And I've just slapped a bit of this echo rack on top of it. Really nice. Got the tone pulled down a fair bit just to make the delays quite dark. And just keeping that uh, triplet feel going to just add a little bit more groove to this beat. And overall, we've got a nice vibe going on. Sweet. Overall, really cool plugin. I think last but not least, I'm going to show off how I would turn this into a ping pong style delay. It's a very old school method, but a method nonetheless. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two return tracks. Boom, boom. So we've got these right here. I'm going to put one echo rec in there. And because we're using it on a parallel channel on this return, I will put the wet to full. We can really hear that noise. So I'm just going to put these onto mint. And there we go. Pull that back, maybe give a bit of drive. And yeah, a couple of repeats. We don't need to go overboard. Keep it on that. And I'll do quarter notes. So I'm just going to copy this plugin over to the second return track. And what I'll do is I'm just going to basically be able to send Echo Rec 1 to Echo Rec 2, and then Echo Rec 2 to Echo Rec 1. So we're actually creating a bit of an internal feedback loop with these two delays going on so i don't want to overdo it so i'm going to do maybe minus 20 we'll start there on each and then super important we've got to pan them one left and one right so actually let me get this guitar track that i was using i'm going to turn off the delay on that okay dry guitar sound and now i'm just going to send this to c so i'm actually going to crank it a bit more let's go minus five Okay, there we go. I had to do a little tweaking because of the pan laws in Ableton, but basically I just changed this from a stereo panner to a split panner, put those both left, put those both right, and now we have our ping pong. Start some feedback between the two. I can actually probably turn this up as well. Let's go minus five, see how it sounds. You can hear that starting to feedback, so I'm gonna pull that down. We don't need to go too overboard. And maybe even the feedback on both of them we can be a bit less generous with. Wow, it got really dark outside. <laughs> Really nice. As a you know stereo ping pong delay, when you're doing this, you can obviously be a bit more creative, or not creative, but you can dive a bit deeper in the sense of, say, I can make one of these delays have more treble, the other one have more bass, one with maybe more drive than the other.
Yeah. Well, that always sounds really lovely. But there you go. So that's the Echo Wreck. Wow, it really did get darker. Actually, one second. Okay, there we go. Give me a bit more brightness. So there you go. That's the Echo Wreck by Pulsar. Again, thank you guys for sending me the plugin. Really cool stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something about this delay. Really characterful, very interesting. And overall, I just really enjoyed the sound of it. Sounds really nice. But that will be all for today. If you enjoyed this video, let us know. Leave a comment in the comment section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. The support really helps. And thank you to everyone who's done so, so far. And once again, I've been Chris Vella, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.